Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be looking at state modifiers. Now essentially state modifiers is a way you can describe either a function or variable on what they can access essentially in regards to the contract state. This does also include external contracts as well. Now essentially there are four ways that we can describe our sort of state access. We can simply do it by having no definition at all, which means that we have free roam and we can access anything without sort of implications. We can have a constant access where we can essentially have access to ourselves and anything else which is constant. We can have a view state, which is essentially a way that we can view members of, uh, essentially we can view state members, but we can't modify them. And pure is essentially another way where we can say, we're not gonna be accessing anything that we shouldn't be accessing within the state. We can't even view it. We definitely can't modify it. And it is essentially the most, it's kind of the most constraint way of describing a function. So it's very good if you wanted to do something like a, a math library or something like that, where you were only just passing values in and you wanted to return a value based off those values. So kind of let's just jump into this. Now I've already created a, a, a very basic contract here called state modifiers. First things first, I'm gonna cover this whole concept of constant. So with a constant value, essentially in Solidity, very similar to any other programming languages, um, I'm gonna define first actually a private constant and then just call it simply var constant value. And the first thing that we'll complain about is the fact that this constant value, because you can't modify it after compilation, it has to start with a definite value. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it 55. Now I'm also gonna introduce a uint private non-definitive state variable, and we're gonna call this state value. Obviously, because it's a state value, it can be modified anytime and therefore does not need an initialized, um, any sort of an initialized parameter, such as the 55 in the constant value. So we're gonna create a function first. And I'm first gonna create a very basic, um, we're gonna call this state access. So this function, we're gonna make sure it's public, and we're gonna return a uint. Now essentially, because we have not defined any limitations to our function, we can modify variables within the state, we can return essentially anything. So in this case, I can return either the state value, which this will then moan, well, I'll say moan, the compiler will basically say this is now in a, a view state because we're viewing something. Um, but we can also access the var constant value here as well. And this will now say that we can modify it to pure, or we could have it as a constant function as well. But what I'm gonna do is just try and keep this within constraints. We're going to also define the state value and then we're gonna return it. So obviously this can't be pure, it can't be constant and it cannot be view. Is we modify something and then return it. Okay, so that's a very basic cover of the constant modifier. Next, we're gonna look at the view modifier. So with a another function again, Actually, no, we're gonna to stick to constant. Um, we're gonna create a function, call it constant access, make it public and returns a unit again. Now, if I try and return the um, var constant value, it'll first highlight the fact that this can actually return, um, this can basically be defined, sorry, as a pure function because we are not modifying or accessing anything of the state in essence because this is constant. Um, but with the constant value of a function, uh, which I should have defined as, um, we can access other aspects of the, uh, say for instance, like the block information. So for instance, we could return now. Now, let's just actually say block dot uh, number for instance. Now, because the block.number is in essence a constant value, surprisingly, we can access it. Now, if I were to actually change this to pure, like it was highlighting before, it can't access, for instance, block.number or any of the sort of constants within the system. So we can maintain that as constant. So the next thing we wanna do is look at the view access. So it's created public, create a view and returns a unit again. So with the view access, essentially we can access or view anything. We can't modify it, but we can view it. So 
similar to like this public uh, this sort of the state access we can access the state value just fine without any issue obviously if we then try and modify it it's going to complain because we've defined we've declared it as a view so we shouldn't be able to modify anything and that will potentially cause some issues there so we can also access the constant values as well no issue obviously this is um telling us that we need to define it as pure but we're going to stick it as state value and therefore make it sort of live within its constraints because i know a lot of people do generally see a lot of these function um, sort of suggestions pop up when they're actually doing things in remix saying oh this should be a view this should be pure and, and so forth so the final thing we're going to cover is obviously this pure access where we're basically saying we are not going to be interacting with any sort of uh, any sorry let's make this view uh, returns a uint so we're not going to be interacting with anything outside of the scope of the state uh, or anything within the scope of the state should i say uh, we're only going to be accessing things that we know that we can access okay so that we can see that we have um a var constant value here which we can return just fine so that can return just fine we can also we can also return a constant value itself but we obviously can't out return anything like now because that's that's not within the constraints of pure that's access an external state value so let's simply stick that to our constant value and that in a nutshell is state modifiers within solidity and um, it is something that probably crops up quite commonly especially if you actually do anything and you'll see all these suggestions saying oh this needs modifying this needs modifying and so forth but either way that in a nutshell is state modifiers now if you found this video useful uh, give it a thumbs up if you would like to stay up to date with all the rest of my tutorials um, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when i release a new one um, i do have at least number four lined up after this one which includes looking at security optimization um, testing and i can never remember what the fourth one is but either way that is essentially what i will be covering so obviously if you're interested hit that subscribe and you should be notified now I'm going to wrap this up here and call it a day. So good luck and I will catch you next time.